So here's the deal. Take a look what's going on in Argentina. They have a hundred percent inflation rate. People are going to do everything they can as their inflation skyrockets and the value of their currency declines. They're going into cryptocurrencies big time. This is the way out for a lot of people. They can't afford to buy an ounce of gold or anything like that. They're buying pieces of whatever they can with the money that they can. They're seeing their economies decline, inflation skyrocket, and the, that's what he's talking about in, in how they're getting away from the regular currencies and going into that direction. All right, Gerald Salente, uh, good friend. Uh, we've done a couple shows together. I'm so happy to see you again. Thanks for joining me today. Ah, oh, great being on with you. It's been too long. Yeah, uh, you're always just so much fun to talk to, just a wealth of, of knowledge. You've been paying attention to these trends, writing the Trends, trends Journal for, for decades, paying attention to the trends. Uh, so I love always, always seeing you. And of course, you've always got so much fire. Uh, and, uh, and, and so you make it really fun. You know, so you write this Trends Journal every week. You put out a ton of stories that you're following. Um, and over time, you see all these stories and you start connecting the dots and you start to see kind of where things are going. Um, it seems like, and you tell me, I mean, you've been doing this a long time, but it seems like all these dots and stories are all sort of trending towards this like uh, same direction at one point. All these things that look maybe not connected all sort of end up being connected. And maybe it all starts with the money. You have a saying that uh, when all else fails, they take you to war. I want to go there, but not just yet. Um, is it about money and power that's driving this and maybe we should start talking about what's going on in the markets and potentially the fed and central banks losing control it's all about money it's all about the bottom line and you look at um you know every war that goes on i mean you think the united states would have invaded iraq if their major export was broccoli now the united states there there's dirty uh syrians bombing american troops in syria you mean in eastern Syria, where we have no right being, where we're stealing their oil? Oh, you remember the sun never sets on the British Empire? We'll go anywhere we want in the world and steal anything we want? And, I mean, it just keeps going on. You know, when I say when all else fails, they take you to war. I just learned this this year. And you can Google it up. You just, you just put in uh, Franklin Roosevelt seizes Japanese assets. And you get history today, mainstream. In July of 1941, President Franklin Roosevelt seized all Japanese assets in the United States. And you know why? Those dirty Japanese invaded French Indochina. Remember, we're talking about money. Oh, the Japanese invaded French Indochina? What the hell are the French doing in Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam? I was stealing their tin and their rubber and murdering yeah. and slaughtering and raping, doing anything we want. French that, Indochina? That, and then that, it that goes sounds on. Like, um, that sounds like uh, seizing Russia's accounts, bank accounts. And uh, was it just this week, Zelensky is like, just take the rest of their money. Give us Russia's money. <laughs> yeah. Sort of like a repeat. And then again, when all else fails, this is 1941. The United States is in a deep depression. This is right. July. Then those dirty Japanese, they took over Cameron Air Force Base, which is only, this is in history today, only 800 miles away from the United States troops in the Philippines. What the hell are we doing in the Philippines? <gasps> and... Not they also close to the British forces in Singapore. What the hell are the British doing in Singapore? Oh, and then the British and the Dutch united with the Americans and they cut off three quarters of Japan's trade and eighty eight percent of its imported oil. Right. Hmm. A death they sentence. Only, they only import hundred percent of their oil. I can't understand why they bombed Pearl Harbor a couple of months later. Again, I didn't know this. When all else fails, they take you to war. What followed the dot-com bust? People couldn't stand that little daddy's boy of nothing, little Georgie Bush. The dot-com bust. What followed it? 
the war on terror. We're going to get right. that guy Osama bin Laden dead or alive. Yeah. And now you got it going on in Israel. People have no idea about the 39 weeks, 39 weeks, 39 weeks of major protests against Netanyahu's Judicial Reform Act. People, I ask people, they have no idea. Not my language, the language coming out of Israel, Haaretz, the Israeli newspapers, uh, uh, Times of Israel, uh, Jerusalem Post. A civil so this is the, war. The, the last 39 weeks. So for like the last year, you're saying. Yeah, 39 weeks up until October 7th. Okay. 39 weeks, major protests. They called it a civil war. Totally forgotten. When all else fails, they take you to war. Was so, this, uh, th this because people were unhappy with uh, Netanyahu and they were threatening his uh, leadership? Is that what you're talking about? I'm oh, not yeah. sure. Go ahead and fill us in on what, they're, what you're talking about. No, the, the, he passed the Judiciary Reform Act that basically said that the, the, the courts have no power anymore, the politicians do. There were major protests, anybody could look it up, hundreds of thousands of people taking to the streets for 39 weeks in a row, up until wow. October 7th. Netanyahu's poll ratings were in the toilet. Yeah. The people and we also yeah. know that uh, Israel was like, probably led the world in heavy-handed uh, pandemic regulations. We'll say that, right? I mean, they were the heaviest lockdown, uh, put out more medicine than any country, I think, in the world. So people were already unhappy about that. Now, to your point, sort of consolidating power in the government, people are pushing back about that. He's most likely going to be losing everything, his legacy, if you will. And so maybe war is a way to sort of uh, bring everybody back together under the guise of nationalism, our team. Is you that, that kind of what you're seeing? They do it all the time. They do it all the time. Again, before Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, 80% of the Americans were opposed to getting involved in World War II. And then Pearl Harbor, let's go to war. They do it all the time. So anyway. What about, what about uh, back further in history in World War I with J.P. Morgan loaning all the money to England and France, um, and they were losing the war to Germany. And if they lost the, the war, how does J.P. Morgan get his money back? So he tries to get the U.S. into war. The U.S. didn't want to go into war. He bought all the media outlets. And then just so happened, one of our uh, merchant ships got sunk, and then the U.S. goes into war. Yeah, you got it. And it just keeps going on and on. So th we're in a very critical time right now. And um, one of our top trends, by the way, for 2023, if everybody there could look at it, came out in January 3rd, Middle East meltdown. We warned that this was going to happen because of what was going on with the Netanyahu government. People couldn't stand it. And, and they kept the United States and Israel talking about what they're going to do to Iran. And right. so if the United States and Israel, if, if Iran gets involved in this, looking at the markets, we're going to see oil prices go to above $130 a barrel. If that happens, it's going to crash the global economy, and it's going to crash the equity markets. That is our forecast for what's going to happen. If they get involved in this, if this war keeps spreading, that's, that's going to bring down the equity markets and the economies. And by the we, way, the re, one, again, not my language. You go to oil prices, you know, all, all the top... Uh, sites that follow oil. Uh, the reason why oil prices, Brent crude is only, you know, around the $80 a barrel uh, level is because demand is down so low, right. particularly in China. So that we, we are in, the markets and everything is artificially being built up. The equity markets have nothing to do with reality. Look at the numbers on, uh, from MERS, the, the big trading, the big shipping firms. Look at their profits sinking into the toilet. Yeah, look FedEx at, too. Yep. And look at, look at China's last numbers coming out with exports. They were only down 6.4%. Right. And they, this is since May, every month they've been going down like that. So the, there's a global slowdown already. Europe is not officially in a recession. They're in a recession. Yeah. Germany, the fourth largest uh, economy in the world is in recession. And so with the, this war going on is going to make a very bad situation very much worse. On, on Zero Hedge today, there's an article that they were talking about from, I think it was Financial Times, about Mario Draghi saying that Europe is already in recession, yep. and if they don't come together, this is going to be the end of the Eurozone. That's what the article was saying. 
I, I, don't, I don't know if it's going to be the end of the Eurozone, but it possibly will be because you're seeing com, uh, countries like uh, Romania and, and I think Slovakia, I'm not sure it's Slovakia or Ser one of those, uh, uh, Serbia, you know, they're, they're pushing back against supporting the Ukraine war and they're pushing back uh, a, on a number of issues. So yeah. it, it may be the breakup of it uh, coming. And it, it's a very, we're in a very dangerous time right now. World War yeah. III has already begun. And, so uh, the, you, you talk about the, the global slowdown happening, the markets are, are softening. Because we're in a debt-based monetary system, we can't have deflation or everything melts down. Uh, the problem that the central banks around the world have got themselves into is that they're in this rock in the hard place scenario where if they don't keep stimulating the markets, then they have deflation, which they can't have. But if they continue to stimulate the markets, then inflation rages on. And so they're sort of stuck here. But uh, I, maybe what you're saying or the, what I'm seeing is that if war happens, then they have an excuse for inflation. You got then it. they can pump the money in and, hey, inflation's super hot, but it's not our fault. It just is what it is because of war. When the war is over, we'll get inflation back down. Is that what the guise of war would be? That would be it. But this time, when this war happens, they asked a cat by the name of uh, Albert Einstein who knew a thing or two about atomic bombs. Right. And he's, they asked him, what kind of weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know. But they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the fourth. Yeah. We got, dementia, we got mentally ill people running the show. How can anybody with a brain bigger than a pea look up to the imbeciles and morons running the show? Look, Biden dead right in front of our eyes. Mitch McConnell, <laughs> little, little Lindsey yeah. Graham, a little warmongering little freak that couldn't fight his way out of a paper bag. Chucky e. Schumer. Oh, and the big news of Dianne Feinstein died. She was dead before she died. Yeah. Look at the clowns running the show. And people have, it, it, this is, it, it, we are in the most serious times in my lifetime. Yeah, I mean, Diane Feinstein, I think, voted the day that she died. I mean, it was that crazy. <laughs> so um, we, ha we have all this going on. Now, um, if we look at it maybe from a bigger picture, I'm just curious your take on this because, um, you know, we have like the World Economic Forum that's trying to kind of get the whole world in, obviously the UN and the WHO and all these like, you know, globalist movements, if you will. But uh, from what we're seeing now with China and Russia, the Middle East, um, it looks like all that's breaking apart. So do you trend forecast that the world continues to break apart so that's sort of the end of the UN, WEF, WHO? Or do you think that power of the UN, um, WEF, the globalist, continues to grow? Which, which way do you see that going? No, globalization is ending. And there's no question And about globalism it. as well? Yep. Yeah, and, but the United States and NATO are going to try to keep it together. But it, they, the world has had it with the United States. Uh, they're tired of its economic hegemony and its geopolitical hegemony. And particularly what's going right on now with the Israel war. You see the numbers coming out and, and the people complaining about the United States stance on this. And they, yeah. again with the Ukraine war as well. The, no, they, they're, they're definitely pulling apart. You know, I want to go back before I forget. You, you were mentioning about China and, and deflation. China's in deflation now. They're, 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 they are, they are con very concerned about deflation. And what's their debt ratio to GDP? According to some of the numbers, well over 300% of the GDP. So China, China, when they launched the COVID, by the way, three things happened that changed the world in front of us. The COVID war in 2020, again, brought to you by the Chinese celebration of the Chinese Lunar New Year, the year of the rat, January 2020. The Ukraine war and now the Israel war. So going back to China, China was overbuilt. The economy was booming. It was it, when, when Clinton brought him into the World Trade Organization in 2000 and officially came in two weeks after 9-11 in 2001, you look at their GDP from 1970 to, to, to 2001, it shoots up. Right. When all booms happen, they, they're always overbuilt. Everybody gets into it, and they were overbuilt before. Then they locked down the damn place for three years with zero COVID policy. Right. They destroyed this economy 
to levels that are incalculable, and it's global. So when you're talking about deflation and what they're trying to do to stimulate now, they're not dumping in enough money, and they're trying to do everything they can to stimulate the economy in China. China's economy is done yeah, I mean, that seems to be the case. I mean, I know, to your point, the debt levels that they have make uh, the U.S. look tame, uh, right? And we know that a lot of that growth came from artificial demand, meaning the government um, pushing that up. And so, obviously, that, that comes to roost at some point. Then they have the massive demographic problem, which is a big problem, right? I mean, about, what, half their population will be gone in the next uh, couple of decades, um, just timing out just from old age. Um, so they certainly have massive tailwinds, or headwinds, I should say, but... They've sort of done like this colonial, colonialism 2.0, so to speak, right, with all their belt and road initiatives and things like that. Do you think potentially some of those investments in those areas could help save them or it's not enough? No, not now. Not now. Not with the global economy going down. Again, go back to 2019. Germany was a fraction of a point away from recession. One of our top trends for 2020, before the call, you know, we, we did those in December, was um, uh, New World Disorder. There were protests going on in 2019 all over the world, in Algeria, in Lebanon, in South Africa, in India, in Peru, in Chile, all over the world, demonstrations going on, people protesting against lack of basic living standards. Remember the yellow vest in France? Be, uh, uh, government corruption, crime, and violence. Yep. To, to that point, I, um, I've, I covered uh, just before the end of the year, in 2019, there was 10 countries with over 1 million people each protesting. Yep. And then the COVID war. You can't go out to the streets. Yep. Get they just back all went away. in your house. They're all gone. So then, again, making connections between different fields as we're doing, what do they do? The COVID war happens. Get back in your house. You can't go out. Close down your business, blah, 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 blah. But hey, here's some free money. Trillions of dollars governments threw into there. Brought, they, they kept the, the uh, negative interest rates in, in Europe, and we went to zero interest rates. The economy should have collapsed during the COVID war. They were artificially propped up with all of this fake money, Look at the housing boom that happened with very low mortgage rates. Right. Totally artificially propped up. And now that prop is gone. But can't they bring the prop back? No. Because I mean, it was ten, uh, between the, in, in the U.S., between the Fed and the fiscal stimulus was somewhere about $10, $11 trillion. And yes, they brought rates to zero. Couldn't they just go to $20 trillion and bring rates back to zero? Because what's going to happen is they bring rates down, the dollar goes down. When the dollar goes down, this is going to be the be going back again, making connections between different fields. And you mentioned about globalization and all of these BRICS and others that have had it with America. This is when the dollar goes, when interest rates go down, the dollar is going to go down. It's going to be the beginning of the death of the dollar. And gold prices are going to skyrocket, as we forecast. Right. Because as the dollar gets stronger, then asset prices come down. If the dollar gets weaker, then asset prices go up. So to the point that you're saying, if they bring rates down, the dollar will get weaker. One, because they've printed more of them. Two, there's less demand for the treasuries because the rates are down. So that pushes asset prices up, which is inflation. So massive inflation rages in. Um, some might argue that, uh, well, not some, like Luke Grauman, who I think is uh, uh, brilliant in, in front of this, you know, he argues that uh, the only way, and this is, you, you mentioned World War I, like um, in World War I, we had massive debt to GDP, similar to what we have now. Lynn Alden sort of makes this comparison as well. And um, in 2015, the IMF put out a white paper called Liquidation of Government Debt, and they run this financial repression, which is high inflation and low yields, and that brings the debt to GDP percentage back in order. Um, Israel did this in the 80s, and potentially if they were to give us really high double to triple digit inflation for two to three years, they could bring the debt to GDP back into this 50, 60 percent range. I, I don't know. You yeah, know, I, who knows? It's, it's a guessing game and at that level. Again, when you lower interest rates, the dollar goes down, and then countries' currencies go higher. And they could buy more gold because gold is dollar-based, as are a number of commodities. 
Right. And again, when they lower interest rates, inflation is going to go back up. Right. That's the problem. That's the problem. And and at these crazy high rates that we're having right now, we're not even having treasury demand. Yesterday's auction had a was was a massive failure, and that's at the high rates. So to your point, if they drop rates, there's going to be even less demand. Yes. And by the way, China is buying more gold than any other country. And right. their yuan is way down against the dollar, and they're still buying gold. So they know how bad it is when they created it, so they should know. And so that, that's, we see, that's where we see it going. And by the way, on the interest rates, we're forecasting they're going to lower them next year. They do it all the time in the run-up to the presidential reality show. Think about it. Look who's running our government, the banksters. Who's our Fed head? Jay Powell. Powell. Who was the former Fed head? Janet Yellen. Where is she now? Oh, she's our Treasury Secretary? Wait, wait, wait a minute. The former Fed head is our Treasury Secretary? Look who's running the country. Look who's in charge. The banksters. So... They're going to do everything they can to stay in power with the power that's right in now. They're going to lower interest rates. That's the way we, we forecast. This and going back to the banksters, by the way, to see how bad it is that's hardly making the news comes up and goes away. Hey, how, how much uh, stock did Jamie Dimon sell uh, last week? And how much are the other banks, banker bandits selling their stocks? One after another, they're selling stocks. They're bailing out of their own banks. They're bailing out. Right in, front of, right in front of everybody's eyes. And again, what we had forecast going back over three years now, when they caused the lockdowns and people weren't going back to work, we said there's going to be an office building bust. Yeah. 20%, this is the data, not my numbers, 20% of the office buildings in the 10 largest cities in America are vacant. The office occupancy rate, according to Castle Systems with a K, 49.6%. Now, in New York City, the foot traffic is down 33%. Now we're talking before about high interest rates. And these are revolving loans, a lot of these. Right. There's almost $300 billion in loans coming due by the end of this year in commercial real estate. They're not going to be able to pay off a lot of them because the tenants haven't renewed their leases, a lot yeah. of them. You have a high office vacancy rate. The banks are going to go bust. That's what's going to crash the economy when the banks go bust, look what happened. Look what happened to the markets when the Silicon Valley and the First Republic and the other one went down. You see, the, 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 remember what happened with Lehman Brothers. It takes one big thing to make the reality happen. And we're forecasting it's going to be the office building busts that's going to bring down the banks. Yeah, so I've seen some of these massive towers, some of the biggest buildings in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, are selling for fractions of yep. what they sold four or five, six years ago. Um, and these cities are turning into, uh, I don't want to say ghost towns, they're turning into like zombie apocalypses, if you will. Yep. Um, a lot of it driven by Dem policy, blue state policy, to destroy the inner cities. Um, so a lot of that has left. And then you just throw in on top of it this business environment that we have as well. And these office towers are like going for less than it costs to build them. It reminds me of what I saw in Detroit in, you know, the mid 2010s. Um, these buildings were going for less than just like the marble in the building, for example. Right. It's like St. Louis. I saw big buildings. It's crazy. I want to jump to another trend, Gerald, that this has been f uh, like right in front of me. This is uh, I framed it up on my radio show yesterday as uh, the greatest fight of our life. And it's, it's a massive trend that I see that's been shaping up rapidly uh, for a long time. And this is the trend of censorship. <laughs> and so, you know, you're saying that uh, when all else fails, they take you to war. Um, you called the banksters. Uh, you called them the bank bandits. I haven't heard that term. I like that. Uh, what we're seeing because of this is 
the greatest level of fraud right in front of our face that we've ever seen from the Biden crime syndicate to whatever happened with the elections to uh, going into wars, all of this. And, and the internet has given us people like you and I, the ability to see this, talk about it. And they don't like that. I'm guessing. And we are seeing this massive push. There's three things that I saw just this week. One, Biden signed a new executive order to control artificial intelligence. Uh, two, Jim Jordan put out this whole expose on this election in integrity uh, partnership and CISA and how they actively work to uh, control the 2020 election. And then now Biden's doing this thing called digital equity where they want to take over the federal, uh, the FCC, and would give the administrative state total control over internet services, including how ISPs are able to allocate capital, where they can build, and the services that consumers could purchase. And then lastly, I'll throw this point out. I saw today a California, of course, a Californian is running for Congress on an anti-free speech platform. What is going on with that? It's been going on, you know, and, and just keeps escalating. Journalism is dead in the, in the country. It's not journalism anymore. You tune into your favorite network to hear what your crap that you want to swallow. And again, we've been talking about this. It's in the Trends Journal in this edition. We have a whole article that we call it Censorship 2.0. This really started to escalate around 2014. That's when we really started uh, writing about it. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Look what happened with the COVID war. They called anybody that didn't want, that, that opposed getting a, a gene therapy inoculation, the first ever injected into the human body, conspiracy theorists and misinformation. If you don't swallow government crap, then, then you believe in misinformation. Right. So it's, only, it's right in front of everybody's eyes and it's only getting worse. Again, journalism is dead. And uh, they only sell one side of the story. Look, again, going, I, I couldn't stand this little bastard. And uh, <laughs> Bill Clinton, every time he got caught with his pants down, bombs away over Baghdad, you know, a real arrogant bastard, gave us, you know, th there's a great clip, by the way, of Madeleine Albright, which Biden quoted recently, of when Leslie Stahl on 60 Minutes asks Madeleine Albright if the price of, 500,000 Iraqi children under the age of five is worth the sanctions Clinton put on and the war, the bombing in Iraq. And she said, yes, it is. So let's go back to the media and censorship. This is the son of a bitch, this arrogant little paid off clown that gave us the Federal Communications Act of 1996 that allowed the bigs to buy up everything. Cumulus, all these companies. Now you have five or six companies that own over 90% of the media. So the big corporations, just like they own everything else, own the media. And they're in bed with, they're, the government's in bed with them. Morons and imbeciles call it campaign contributions. Adults call it bribes and payoffs. Right. So we have no media. And that's why when the Trends Journal, we're giving people what used to be, you know, journalism. It's gone now. And when we write the articles, by the way, we say, this is what's being reported using their language. And then we give, this is our trends analysis, so you know it's coming from us. This is our trend forecast, so you know it's coming from us. We're not skewing the story like they do. Journalism is dead. And again, Bill Clinton is responsible for that. Also gave us, put China into the World Trade Organization. You know, it just, it when it destroyed our... You know, people forgot about, by the way, the Battle of Seattle, 1999. They, they, when China was going to be brought into the World Trade Organization, they had a WTO meeting in Seattle. Almost 50,000 people took to the streets in protest because they knew our jobs would be sucked out. You know what the media did? All they covered were these agents provocateurs that were smashing windows and, and, you know, maybe burning a car or something. And everybody forgot about why the people were protesting. And they, so going back to censorship, that's what they do. 
But I, I think like uh, you mentioned, you know, Bill Clinton's thing in 1996, which uh, allowed for this kind of uh, monopolization of media, um, et cetera. But it seems like now with the rise of the Internet, like the ability for you and I to sit here and talk about this, you be able to put out your trends journal. We've sort of taken away the power of that legacy media. Um, legacy media is no longer trusted. People see that it's all propaganda. So we have the rise of the Joe Rogans and we even have uh, typically left-leaning people like Matt Taibbi or Michael Schellenberger now seeming to be voices of reason. And it seems like that is now the threat. Oh, we can't allow those people Absolutely. to say anything. Yeah. And so we have to make it illegal. <laughs> Under the guise of safety, we have to make it illegal. Exactly. Look what they did again with during the COVID war. Guys like uh, Joseph, Dr. Joseph Marcola, banned. Right. You know, one after another, banned, 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 banned. You don't, you don't buy the, and again, like you said, you know, we, they may take us off the, they might, people can't believe that I'm still on when they watch my, 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 uh, I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's censorship. And again, this is the America, by the way, that goes slaughters people all over the world under the line that we're bringing freedom and democracy as they're yeah. stealing it from us right in front of our eyes. You know, once upon a time, there was a thing called the Declaration of Independence. Life, mm. liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Happiness is never talked about anymore. All it is is misery. And liberty, no. You, remember, remember they were going to put that, that clown woman in there as the misinformation uh, director. Bizarre. Yeah. And by the way, I find that sexist calling it misinformation. We should call it gender information. Let's really be stupid about it. You know? <laughs> yeah. And, and over, over, over and over and over again, we see that the greatest purveyor of misinformation is the state itself. Yep. Everything they've told us from the pandemic forward has been proven to be wrong. Everything from uh, the pushing of the steel dossier and the Russian dif disinformation, all that's been proven to be false. Yep. They censored the whole uh, Biden laptop story. All that was proven yep. to be false. All of the safe and effective medicine, all that's been proven to be false. Like they're the ones that push the misinformation and then project that onto us, it seems like. Well, that's exactly what they're doing again. They run the government. Him. Who's our defense secretary? Lloyd Austin. What was his last job? I'm not sure. Sitting on the board of directors of Raytheon, the second largest defense contractor in the United of States. Of course. It's always a revolving door. It's not a revolving door. It's one door. Okay. The corporations are in charge of everything. I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. I used to run major political campaigns in Westchester County, the richest county in America back in the 1970s. I was on the other side. I know what a freak show it is. The people that are politicians are the little boys and girls that I couldn't stand in college that wanted to be class president or right. head of the student council. Yeah. You buy these little nothings off for nothing, for nothing. And that's all they are, are bought off. They, the, gov the government is completely, con it's a crime syndicate controlled by, so when you're talking about, before you were talking about the, the drug stuff, eh, big pharma, look at the money they give. And by the way, how about drug dealers rather than calling a big pharma? And again, it's one after another. They are the ones that control the government. It's the big corporations that tell these little clown boys and girls what to do. They're all this little nothings. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I saw Rand Paul was on uh, Piers Morgan, and Piers Morgan was asking about this free speech thing, and he said that the solution to ugly and despicable speech is more speech. Piers Morgan said, what about these anti-Israel demonstrations that threaten to disrupt Remembrance Day? And Paul said that countering with better ideas and useful arguments is much better than banning speech. Yeah. Again, Piers Morgan, look at the little stupid, arrogant clown of nothing. Look at him. Look at him. I wouldn't go on with that guy. Now you little jerk. A little nothing. They're little nothings. 
And again, talking about, oh, by the way, up here in Kingston on November 8th, there were over 2,000 people taking to the streets right around the corner from me, right, right, right here on Wall Street, protesting the Israel war. Cease fire now, one after another, and you know who? These are the terrible people that did it. Here, in fact, here's, here it is right here, so you know. They put this article out. This is for Jewish Voices for Peace. So Piers Morgan calls them, what do you call them? Anti? Uh, he was saying um, anti-Israel demonstration. Anti-Israel anti demonstration brought to you by Jewish Voices. He was talking about it in, in London. Some, some yeah, I'm just telling London. you, they're doing it all over the world. Yeah. They're doing it all over the world. So you're going to call these people Jewish people? Anti-Israel? How about anti what they're doing? I want to stay on this for a second if I can. Yeah. This is your Trends Journal when it used to be a quarterly. See that? Crusades yep. 2000. 2006. While the seeds of the Crusades had been planted in full view of the world, and all those watching could have anticipated the eventual harvest, the memories of what happened and what would occur have been fogged by rigid ideology, fanatical religiosity, patriotic fervor, government propaganda, and ulterior motives. Regardless of what England's reasons or intentions were, self-serving or otherwise, Crusades 2000 was laid, Crusades 2000 was set in motion by the 1917 Balfour Declaration. This is the quote. Oh, excuse me, Balfour Declaration that laid the foundation for Israel. Here's the quote. His Majesty's government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and will use our best endeavors to facilitate the achievement of this objective. Now, wait a minute. His Majesty's government the crime syndicate from the UK? Who are they to say, who are they to say that they're in favor of the establishment of Palestine as a national home for the Jewish people and we use their best endeavors to facilitate this objective? This is the, this is, huh, this was from Wednesday's New York Times. Could you see that? King. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's ridiculous. Look at this little, little, it's, little clown show dressed it's up like in a let them eat cake drag. moment to me. What? It's like a let them eat cake moment. Yeah, look, they're all dressed up in this stupid drag. Look at these stupid people. What they look like? This is His Majesty's government declaring what should go on in Palestine. Who the hell are you to do this? Don't you know who we are? Again, the sun never sets on the British Empire and will murder you too. Nobility. A little clown boy of nothing. People have no idea about this. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. No, no, any. Again, you go back to the Trends Journal. You get it. When the Netanyahu government came in, not our language from the mainstream media, extreme right wing extremists. That's what they call it. a government of right wing extremists. Week after week after week after week after week, since December, we've been publishing what they've been doing to the Palestinians. Stealing more of their land, the mosque issues, on and on and on. On and on and on, all leading up to this. But nobody knows the facts. They don't want to know the facts. They'll only buy the headline. So people have no idea what's going on. And again, brought to you by... Little jerky clowns like this. I said, how can you look up to a Mitch McConnell, a, a Joe Biden, a, 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 a Lindsey Graham, a Chucky Schumer, and you look how they look up to the clown king and his queen. queen. Here, here, king. Here, boy. Come here, king. Sit. Give me your paw. Now, oh, it's king. 
I, I saw that and he was he was sitting there talking about how people in the UK are having a hard time because inflation and prices are too expensive and they can't afford things and on and on and on while he's wearing a, a crown that's valued at three billion dollars or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Insane. I know. It reminds me. Yeah. Like I said, that's why I was saying it, it looks like this let them eat cake moment where you have the world like really suffering. I saw this article uh, uh, today saying that uh, food prices and food inflation in these other nations is so bad, it's yep. worse than the Arab Spring. Yep. And uh, you have this, this, this point where people are literally starving to death, um, and they're just there in this royal outfit. It's just, uh, it just doesn't make any sense today. But again, stay with that, because when we talk about the royal outfit, it's no different from the presidents, chancellors, and prime ministers. They roll out a damn red carpet for these clowns to walk on. Every time they go somewhere, they roll out a red carpet. What the hell? You can't walk on this over you. I mean, what do we, it, 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 no, it's no different than this. So, you know, this all looks really bad, um, and it is. Uh, when I, uh, like I said, for me, like looking at this fight of our life is uh, over this uh, censorship, putting laws in place to like literally make it illegal or even impossible for us to even communicate. Um, you know, this executive order on artificial intelligence, um, you know, I, it seems partly as a response to maybe Elon creating an AI to counter open AI that they, you know, that he wants to feed it different data. Uh, I see them, like I said, just making it even illegal for you and I to even be critical of the state, which yep. is very scary to me. But I want to ask you, because you've been doing this for a long time, and this is obviously before your time, but in the United States, they have passed laws in the past to make it illegal to say anything negative against the state during times of war. Yep. Right. So uh, the Smith Act. Um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the other ones. Um, so we've been things have been worse before yep. and we've come back from it. So I'm curious what your trends forecast says from here. Again, we're at a different point right now because if this. World War III continues to expand, it's going to be nuclear annihilation. And we're also forecasting, you know, like Ukraine's out of the news now, right? They were in the news every day, every right. day, every day up until October 7th when Hamas had that brutal invasion of uh, Israel and killed over 1,400 people. They were in the news every day. We are forecasting there's going to be a false flag, major false flag event or, a, or an attack on a nuclear plant or something that Ukraine is going to do to get back the money that they need, the weapons that they need to keep this war going. Mm. So that's what we're concerned about. That, this is different than the other times. Again, the world wars that they have killed millions and I have destroyed entire countries. But this is, a, this is, again, going back to Einstein, what weapons will be used to fight the Third World War? He said, I don't know, but right. they'll be using sticks and stones to fight the fourth. So we're in a very different time right now. And that's why I'm so concerned. And by the way, I'm asking everybody I know that, that to do everything you can in the name of peace, any way you want to do it. And, you know, I have major peace rallies. I launched Occupy Peace back in 2015. Now, Ralph Nader, Cindy Sheehan, you know, one after another, Judge Napolitano, Phil Girard, uh, uh, you know, you know so I, I do everything I can. If you want to donate to Occupy Peace, fine. If not, do something, anything you want, any way you want, but do something in the name of peace. Oh, and by the way, I get a kick out of these hypocritical guys, like this little clown boy they got now, the, the, tra the new house speaker there, uh, Johnson. You know, he's a devout evangelical Christian, and they hate abortion. Okay, fine. Yeah, but here's more money to go kill people, and we support these wars. Hey, wait a minute. You're against abortion, and you say you're chill killing a child in a mother's womb, but it's okay to go slaughter people all over the world and send all this money to do it? Who are you talking to? Oh, and, 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 and Biden, and I'm a Roman Catholic? What, 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 what Christ are you talking about? Oh, in, in the back of the dollar, uh, the back of all the currencies, in God we trust? What God are you talking about that wants to keep all those wars going? What God are you talking about? They're full of baloney. They're Again, here they are. It's a clown show. It's a freak show in front of everybody's eyes. 
Do you think the people have an appetite to get be- get back into a Ukraine war? It seems like the the tide has turned so much. Uh, it's been completely exposed, which most people, and I'm sure your Trends Journal forecasted, they never had a chance of winning in the first place. Oh, we said it from the beginning, yeah. Right, I'm sure you said it from the beginning. They never yeah. had a chance of, of, of no. winning from the first place. The the whole s- offensive that they were going to launch was never going to work. Yeah, we had the, coverage, uh, the U.S. Right? has basically lit $150 billion on fire. Uh, I don't know, somewhere at least over 500,000 Ukrainians are dead, probably more. They stopped reporting that. Um, there's no chance of them winning. Now his own generals are saying this in the Times Magazine article that came out and so forth. Um, the American people never really wanted to get behind that, maybe temporarily for a little sugar rush, but like there was never support. Boy, I would, I would think it'd be very hard, even with a false flag, for people no. to try to get behind no, that. No, they're, you know, they're, all of a sudden something could happen and they'll make a big deal out of it. They do it all the time. You know, they bombed this, whatever, you know, they did this to, you know, something happened, something, here, go back, go back, and you could see what uh, Russia sent uh, two people killed in Poland by a Russian missile. Remember that one? Big news, two people killed. Oh, and it wasn't a Russian missile, it was a Ukraine missile. It was Ukraine. (laughs) 15 people killed at a restaurant in Ukraine, Russia killed, big news. No, no, it wasn't. It was the Ukraine again. The missile was fired. And they're going to do a false flag. And again, the people, this may be censored, but as we say in the Bronx, we used to say, the people don't know dick about shit. They don't know anything. They get to buy the headline. They'll put some, it, it's a, it, 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 they'll put the propaganda out there. They'll, 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 they'll go the, 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 the Goebbels route. And, and sell the people on a big thing. And the people will buy it. They'll buy it. Let, let's go a little de- deeper on this Ukraine story for a minute. If you look at like the history of Ukraine and Victoria Newland in 2014 and the Bidens and, and Burisma, which I'm sure you've covered extensively over this period of time, um, it looks like you know Ukraine ha- is full of natural resources. It's the breadbasket of Europe. Uh, they're they're critical for pipelines and things like that. Um, and it seems to me, and you tell me because you've been covering this a lot longer than I have, but it seems to me that maybe what they wanted to accomplish in Ukraine was sort of accomplished. And what do I mean by that? Um, one, it was uh, as a uh, uh, as war typically is, it's a way to siphon money from the public into the private pockets. So they've been able to siphon hundreds of billions of dollars or whatever they have been able to do. But more importantly, you know, when Zelensky came to the U.S. Uh, about a month ago, um, he went to Wall Street and he met with all the Wall Street funds and they've all pledged to invest uh, hundreds of billions of dollars to rebuild Ukraine. And really what it looks like happened is they siphoned out $100 billion, gave it to all the private pockets. They leveled Ukraine. Everybody left. All this um, uh, public infrastructure has now been sold off to the highest bidder. So now it's BlackRock and Blackstone and all these Bill Ackman that own all of this, all the rights to the land, to the minerals, to the pipelines, all of these things. So they leveled it. They sold, they chopped it up, they sold it off. Um, they took the money and like maybe mission accomplished or am I wrong about that? No, you might, you like might, be, 100%, you might be 100% right about it. You know, because it's going to be, it's, the war's going to end and they're going to rebuild a place. And just like you said, again, it's a crime syndicate. And by the yeah. way, this was the Trends Journal back in 2014. You see how happy that guy is over here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Washington is driving the world to the final war. World hegemony is not a right America has earned. This is by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who wrote for us. I'm just going to briefly read a part of it. Washington concluded that Russia needed to be confronted with or distracted, again, this is 2014, by problems that would leave the Russian government less confident or able to counter Washington's aggression elsewhere. Ukraine presented the perfect opportunity for Washington to advance its hegemonic agenda. In a speech to the National Press Club last December, which was December 15th, uh, December, excuse me, 2013, Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Nuland boasted that Washington had invested $5 billion in non-governmental organizations in Ukraine. The purpose of the NGOs is, quote, 
to teach democracy. So there it is, the United States overthrew the government. We wrote about it as it was happening. People have no to teach idea. teach democracy. Yeah. A, a, a teach democracy in what the European Union called the most corrupt country in Europe. And the latest Ukrainian poll, besides the war, which is number one concern of the people, 89% of the Ukrainian people are concerned about corruption. And we spent $5 billion to teach democracy in Ukraine. We overthrew the government. We overthrew yeah. the government. And again... And, and, what, and what democracy? I mean, now he wants to... It, Zelensky says he wants to cancel the election. He canceled the election. <laughs> hey, I'm president. Uh, we got a war going on. I'm staying in. And by the way, again, we, we, we write about stuff that no one was talking about. You see this picture, right? It, it was a Sochi Olympics. And the Sochi Olympics is going, just starting, and... The United States, and then the and then and then the coup at the same time. Here, this is. We go on to say that uh, how the fear campaign that the United States kept saying the fear campaign worked just days before the opening ceremony on February fifth. And remember, the 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 revolution takes place a week later, two weeks later. 57% of Americans believed terror would strike during the Sochi Olympics, and that wasn't all. According to the steady stream of reports, hotel rooms were in disrepair. The city was filthy. Poor people had been shipped out of sight and stray dogs shot. It goes on and on and on. How they, and then you look at the ratings, they fell 12% on, the, on people watching the Olympics. So in other words, they kept selling, hate Russia, hate Russia. The Socio Olympics is disgusting. Don't go there. And then they're launching the Ukraine war or coup at the same time. It's a crime syndicate running the country. Two more things I want to bring up with you. Uh, one, I was shocked last night to see, uh, well, one, let's, let's talk, I, want to talk, I want to talk about the invasion of America. <laughs> Uh, the southern border crisis that we have going on. Uh, millions and millions of people coming across. Uh, I think it was almost 300,000 people came across the border illegally last month. Um, the, Trump tried to secure the border. The Democrats shot that down. It was racist, everything. Um, Biden, the Biden men started selling. So then the, the Republicans put through a bill, said that if uh, the Biden administration didn't continue building the wall, then all the parts had to go to Texas. So tes Texas could start building it. Then the Biden administration started secretly selling it off for pennies on the dollar just to get rid of it. Um, but then they capitulated. And then the DHS, Mayorkas says, we're going to build it. And Biden says he's going to put an executive order to build the wall. And then yesterday I was shocked to see Lindsey Graham who I'm sure you have some things to say about Lindsey Graham, oh, uh, yeah. said that he would not vote for one more single penny of spending to anybody, including Israel, specifically he said that, including Israel, until something is done about the southern border. Yeah. Again, it's a joke. That they, they, here, this is America, that, again, we're fighting wars and we can't stop people from coming into this country. Again, you know, I told you I launched Occupy Peace. And one of these are a few of the foundations of it. Number one is bring home all the troops from the 800 bases that we have overseas in some 70, 80 countries and secure the homeland. That's one of the, 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 the principles of Occupy Peace. We know this doesn't have to happen. Look what's going on. Again, as we, we write about, there are huge populist movements going on in Europe right now because they've had it with the flood of people flooding into their countries. Matter of fact, Germany just passed a very stringent one just this week. So this is, and, and, and again, these populist parties are real. They don't want this to keep going on. And, and, and again, people forget this too. The Nobel Peace of Crap Prize winner, Barack Obama, and I love this line, if only women were in charge, that's a lot of crap. Good and bad comes in every race, creed, and color. Along with Hillary Clinton, Samantha Power, and Susan Rice, Gaddafi has to go. You listen, you could Google it up. The arrogant Obama, Gaddafi has to go. The richest country in Africa, where people have more rights and benefits than most of the world, 
Gaddafi, there's the, 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 the video of him, warning Europe, you take me out, you're going to get flooded, flooded, flooded with refugees. Because he was stopping them from going into, into Europe. I mean, Tripoli's right there, you know, Europe's right on the other side. Yeah. And he, Berlusconi was the president, then he warned them. He warned, them, warned all of them. They got rid of Gaddafi, boom. Last time I was in Italy, I couldn't believe how many people were not Italians there, sleeping on the streets and all over the place. Yeah. So this is a huge issue. It can be stopped immediately. 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 What the hell are our troops doing over there? Bring them over here. Close down the borders. You could close this down easy. Oh, they, you were talking about censorship and how, how they know every God, everything that we're doing everywhere, every place, how they're watching us? They could stop it like that. When I was a kid, I'll never forget, we had a cousin, Constantino, and I kept hearing my parents talking about they were trying to bring him over from Italy, and it was so difficult. It was so difficult to bring him over here. That's how strict the immigration laws were. And this is in the 1950s. It's still very hard. It's still very hard today. Legal, legal immigration yeah. is very difficult. And you know who changed it, by the way? It was that other slimeball Johnson, like the little slimeball new Johnson you got in here, was LBJ. Again, my generation, you know, the Vietnam War's going on, and they're drafting all the young guys. So they needed cheap labor to come in. And it was Johnson that first did away with the uh, tough immigration laws to let them come flooding in. And then yeah. and that other slime ball, Bill Clinton, I, again, I wrote it in, in, this, in my book, Trends 2000, 1996, national best, international bestseller, the H-1B visas. Everybody was demanding high wages when the whole internet revolution began. Then they got the H-1B visas so that the Silicon geeks could pay less money and they let more people come in. Again, this could be stopped like that, like that, but they're not going to yeah. do it. And, and they're also letting him in because of cheap labor. That's another reason. They're, right across the street from me, uh, there's a, uh, the Ulster County uh, 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 a building over here for the Ulster County uh, uh, Courthouse. This is, by the way, at that location, this was the first capital of New York State, and then the British burnt it down. The Constitution that was written over there, 70% of America's Constitution comes from there. They're doing all this work out there and redoing the place, all these scaffoldings up. All you hear is Latino language. That's all you hear. They're very hard to find people to do construction work, this kind of construction work. So they want to bring in all the cheap labor they can get so they can pay less. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, you mentioned the populist movements going on in Europe. I mean, you see massive protests going on all through Germany, France, Sweden, everywhere. And there is big populist movements going on. Uh, Italy right now, as a matter of fact, there's massive protests going on in Italy um, over, over what's going on. And instead of doing anything about what the people are mad about, they're just cracking down on for other things. But it was interesting to see Poland, which had been um, sort of immune uh, from all of this because they had strong border policies and they've just completely missed all the trouble these other nations had. And just like two weeks ago, somehow there was some shift in the government and now all of a sudden they're going to open up their borders and allow all these people to come in. So it's like we're witnessing this clash go down in real time where the people, these populist movements, to your point, are saying, we do not want this. They're voicing it, but like the leaders just don't listen. They just don't seem to care. They, they seem to want it. Uh, do you trend forecast for this just to continue? Oh, no, I, no the populist movement is going to get stronger. And you use the it's word leaders. Stronger. I wasn't put on this earth for anybody to lead me. What, who, who put this idea in their head that they're leaders? How about public servants, huh? Could you handle that? That's what they're supposed to be. I know. Leaders. Oh, little clowns. How could, how could you be led by these little clowns? Again, look at the clown show in front of everybody's eyes. You like Nancy Pelosi? You like, look at the little clowns, the little shift over there. Again, one little jerk off after another. One little clown boy and girl telling us what to do, and with attitudes, with attitudes. If, a, I, I, if, if, 
If Chucky e. Schumer came in here and said, listen, Salenti, come over here. I want to talk. I said, come over here and talk to me. I don't, well, who the hell are you talking to? I, you're a piece of crap. Again, you call these guys out. I'm telling you, you call them out man to man. Again, as we'd say in the Bronx, they wouldn't know it at a piss of shit. They're ballless, gutless little boys. They're ballless, gutless little boys with bad attitudes. Yeah. And that's what the people need to do. It has to be people power, not political power. It's a crime syndicate. Hey, I'm Jamie Dimon. I need a couple of trillion dollars. I'm too big to fail. All right, don't worry about it. The Federal Reserve will dump in $29 trillion from 2007 to 2011 to, to bail out the, the central banksters. Oh, not my numbers. That's from Bard College, at Levy Institute of Bard College. They're thieves and they're murderers. Oh, you were talking before about the lies and misinformation? You know, that guy Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. One of the speakers I had at my rally was Phil Giraldi. Phil Giraldi was a top CIA guy, top. He goes into Bush's office and said, Mr. President, here's the proof there are no weapons of mass destruction. You know what Bush said? Get out of the office. Giraldi left and he quit the CIA. You can see his articles at that, that website, UNZ, was it UNZ, his, his articles, go, and we put, put them in the Trends Journal too. They lie to us all the time. They're freaks. Think about it. George Bush, how could anybody look up to a little daddy's boy born on third base, thought he had a home run with a pair of cojones smaller than a mothball, an ignorant little jerk? How can you look up to him? 88% of the people swallowed the crap. We're going to get that guy Osama bin Laden dead or alive in America's longest war in Afghanistan. So going back to will the people believe something coming from Ukraine that gets us back into that? Yes. All you have to look again. When I get upset when I was a kid, my father may rest in peace. He'd say to me, son, take it easy. People have little minds. He said only a few people really know what's going on. And it goes back to another person. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men, said Samuel Adams. Yep. And we are the that irate, tireless minority that has to unite. I, uh, I, I, I write a newsletter, a weekly newsletter called Brush Fires. And I have that uh, picture over here, lighting brush fires in the minds of men. That's my goal. So I love that. I'd love to end on that. But I want to ask you one more thing. <laughs> um, that'd, be not, that'd be a high point. Maybe my editor will switch that around. Um, the other thing you wrote in the Trends Journal this week, um, again, I'm going to link to the Trends Journal down below. We've mentioned it a bunch, so everybody listening should go check it out. I'll link to it down in the, in the description below. Um, in the Trends Journal this week, you wrote TradFi, so that's short for traditional finance, TradFi, traditional finance, is flocking to Bitcoin, and that will likely only accelerate. It's not because Bitcoin changed. Rather, it's monetary debasement and financial manipulation of the fiat system via weaponization of SWIFT that's led to an inevitable erosion of faith and stability in the legacy order. Are they destroying, the more they try to control things, are they destroying themselves and forcing people into alternative parallel systems like Bitcoin? Is that what you're saying in that? Well, the, in that I, I didn't write that article. Joe Duran uh, writes that for us. And he's, uh, one of his books here, oh. he, he, he does this great stuff, technocracy. He writes this huge books. He, here's one. Yeah. This is size of this thing, you know. Wow. So he, yeah, he's really on top of this stuff. So here's the deal. It, no, it, you go, take a look what's going on in Argentina. They have a 100% inflation rate. The deal, by the way, that's really brought it down was when that other clown a couple of administrations ago made the deal with the International Monetary Fund. There was a mafia federation, I'm not sure, about almost like $45 billion dollars to help bail them out. And that brought the country down big time. They can't pay off the debt. People are going 
to do everything they can as their inflation skyrockets and the value of their currency declines, they're going into cryptocurrencies big time. This is the way out for a lot of people. They can't afford to buy an ounce of gold or anything like that. They're buying pieces of whatever they can with the money that they can. They're seeing their economies decline, inflation skyrocket, and the, that's what he's talking about in, in how they're getting away from the regular currencies and going into that direction. So he wrote that, not you, but you've been forecasting this for a long time. You're talking about you, something you did write, I, I believe, or it was in the newsletter as well, is China's buying massive amounts of gold. Yep. And the trend that I see is that people are not trusting this system. They're seeing that yep. sanctions and, and, uh, and uh, you know, illegal crackdowns could be coming against them. And so they're actively looking, whether it's China or the BRICS, or even individuals looking for this parallel system they could jump into. They're like rats trying to jump off the ship, right? We're all trying to find that lifeboat. Yep. Uh, so that's what I see. Um, m maybe not Bitcoin specifically, but is that maybe a trend that you see? People oh, trying absolutely. to leave this established legacy ship? Yep. No, oh, no, we've been saying Bitcoin, you know, we're on and on. You know, we, we, we said it, if it went down to 15,000 a coin, it would crash. And then, we, and then we kept month after month Month after month, we're saying it's solid in the twenty thousand dollar range. Solid in the if it breaks over thirty thousand, we see it going to forty two, forty five thousand. We and then we keep going on. If it breaks this number, then that number. So we see Bitcoin right now. We see it going in easily into the forty two, forty five thousand dollar coin range. But again, yes. you know, I always say, and people don't call me a futurist. Nobody could predict the future. There are too many wild cards, whether they're made by nature or humans. So, again, and I've said this, you know, when you had the great conferences that I was so fortunate to be at, that to me the only thing that I see ending cryptocurrencies is when all governments go digital. They're not going to want to let – they will, they will prohibit competition, and they'll do anything they can to stop it. But that's years and years away. But it's well, going they're coming, to they're coming in hot. They're coming in hot <laughs> right now. They're trying. I know. It's going to happen because they're going to come up with an excuse. They never, there's no way in the world they're going to pay off $33.5 trillion worth of debt. Oh, and then as your interest rates go up, you've got to pay more on the debt. I forgot about that too, right? They're going to come up. The Russians hacked our banking system. You lost all your money, but don't worry. We're going to give it back to you. We're coming out with a new digital coin. They're going to make up right. something. Man, uh, Gerald, uh, man, I, I'm, I'm sad that it's taken so long for us to get back together on the show. You're such a wealth of information and, and entertaining at the same time. I love it. Um, let's go ahead and wrap it up, but uh, give us some closing words. Give us, a, give us some closing words that we should be focused on or maybe some hope that you can give us. What do you got? The, the only, well, for, well, first of all, as I always say, hope is the most negative word in the metaphysical dictionary. It's wanting something to happen without doing anything to make it happen. And as I say, the most important thing to me right now is everybody do whatever you can in any way you can to bring peace on earth. United we stand, divided we die. And to bring back the true spirit of the American government. And right now, there's, I, I was supporting RFK Jr. Matter of fact, I had Dennis Kucinich, his former campaign manager, was a speaker at my peace, freedom, peace and freedom rally in May, and they got rid of Kucinich because Kucinich is very pro-peace. And I am totally against uh, RFK Jr.'s pro-Israeli stand without, matter of fact, Max Blumenthal took him out on a, on a Jimmy Dore show showing how bad uh, RFK Jr. is on this on, on the Israeli thing, and Max Blumenthal is Jewish. And that's the other thing I say to people, don't call me an anti-Semite. I'm not an anti-Semite. I condemn America for its wars. I could condemn anybody I want giving the facts of what I do. And the other thing is three of my last four girlfriends were Jewish, so don't call me anti-Jewish either. And by the way, you know why Jewish men die before their wives? They want to. <laughs> It's not my joke. It's only a joke. Take it easy. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I have nothing, nothing at all to do with that. It has nothing to do with being, again, the biggest rallies going on right now. I showed you the, the 
the New York Times full page ad or never again for anyone, Jewish Voice of Peace. We need peace because this is World War III. And if we don't stop it, you know, everything we're talking about is not going to be worth anything. And of course, the Trends Journal, it's the grand total, $2.86 a week, nothing. Over 170 pages, 160 pages each week. And we're giving you what you're not going to find anywhere else. And the more subscribers we get, the more we can do. And, you know, I'll show you how bad the media is. Every week, you know, I mean, I got to read all this stuff. On Saturday, the Wall Street Journal, $5 a day. On Saturday, when they do the market wrap-up, not a mention of the European or Asian markets. Not a mention. And they'll throw out that PMI numbers went down, and they won't give you the numbers. The reporting is gone. So we're giving you what used to be called journalism and trend forecasting that nobody does. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Uh, what a great note to end on. Um, uh, we're going to link to that down below. You should definitely stay on top of these trends, start connecting these dots on your own. Um, and I want to just kind of echo what you said, right? Uh, don't wait for the government to come save you. They're not. What we need is all of us to take care of ourselves first, like the airplane. Put the mask on yourself and then take care of your neighbor. Put the mask on yourself and then take care of your neighbor. It starts from us leading by example, like, uh, like Gerald said, uh, not being leaders, we're servants. And so we demonstrate that through our actions, be peaceful and let those actions influence the actions of other people. So uh, with that, we'll wrap it up, Gerald. I appreciate it. Always so good to see you. We'll do it again soon. Yeah, and I'd love to see you live sometime. Yeah. Yeah, because let's get together if you're around or I'm around. We'd love to be with you again. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. And thank you for all that you do.